This program was the integration of two significant banks in the UK. Both of them had essentially a similar market share, about 15%. So the combined banking group would be something like 30 to 35% market share. And if you can imagine the, the risks of integrating these two banks and getting it wrong, um, there was significant concern about um, disruption to customers. Um, and given the scale of the new organization and the fact that you know, 30, 40% of the UK economy runs through the books of World's Banking Group, we were absolutely paranoid about doing this the right way uh, to ensure there wasn't a meltdown in the economy on the back of a very poorly integrated uh, set of systems. Yeah? So that, that was a sort of a, a realization that what we were doing was so impactful we had to get it right. So in financial services, IT is central to the whole running of the business. And particularly in an M&A transaction, IT provides a tremendous leverage for synergies, both in cost reduction and also in uh, revenue synergies. So I think the message in my presentation today is in a banking environment, uh, in the one that I'm working in, IT is a central enabler for M&A activity. So IT in a bank is a key enabler of all these types of integration programs. Um, you need to recognize that IT has a key role. You have to make sure that the IT team act as a peer with the business and that you have a sort of a two-in-the-box model in these types of programs where business change and IT change act as peers in a team environment. Uh, and when you recognize that the IT is so central, it becomes really the spine of the plan. The whole program ends up running at the pace at which the IT organization can run. Well, when you embark upon these types of complex integrations, you have to keep the target that you're going for as simple as possible. And you have to be prepared, in some cases, to give up some function and some product to be able to keep the target simple. Uh, because if you complicate the target, it's going to make it very difficult to stick to a very aggressive timeline. Well, there's always going to be uh, distractions in these types of programs, so it's very important that you stay focused on the outcome that you're going after. So um, you need to take away all of the new product development ideas that people will come up with and just stay focused on the target model that you've agreed at the outset of the program and ensure that the, you don't clutter up the development schedule with new things. So getting the right senior leadership team in place for the right behaviors is fundamental. You need to have senior people separated from the running of the organization into a discrete organization to run the integration. That's the first thing. Get yourselves organized so that you have a run the bank organization and an integrate the bank organization. Then you need to have people on the integration program who have an appetite for the detail. These types of things are you know, thousands of, 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 uh, of steps in a, in a program and the senior people need to have the appetite for the detail, understanding business process change and IT change. So having that appetite for detail is really important for senior people. Customers were critical to this program. We set out from the beginning with the objective of making the integration completely invisible to customers. So there was no customer disruption. So all of the activity in the program was focused on how we do this integration and achieve the benefits without any detrimental impact to customers. And that drove our whole philosophy, if you like, of the integration, that minimal customer impact was the mantra. A program of this scale requires absolutely fantastic people with an ecosystem of partners working in tight unison as a team. Yeah? So we had very good people on the business side, an IT team at Lloyd's um, and Halifax Bank of Scotland. But we also had uh, a set of partners in the industry who brought their best talents to bear um, uh, as part of an ecosystem that really brought it together to, to create a very successful integration. Now that the program has been implemented, uh, we're enjoying some significant benefit streams. We've been able to save a couple of billion pounds of expenses. Uh, we've created a custom experience that's uh, much improved for the Halifax Bank of Scotland customers. Um, we've improved our risk management processes um, in, the, uh, in the combined bank. Uh, and we've been able to, I think, become, uh, without doubt, in my view, at least, the best bank in the UK to deliver quality customer service uh, at, a, at a price that allows us to be able to provide value to customers. If I were embarking on another program like this, I would do a couple of things. I would ensure that the senior team that you empower to do this program uh, is absolutely the best team that you can assemble. They need to be leaders who have the courage to uh, approach this program with enthusiasm. They need resilience, they need energy. 
Um, they need to be surrounded by people who have an appetite for the detail because in a program of this complexity there's thousands and thousands of items of detail that need to be understood if you're going to implement it in a successful way. So probably the first and key thing is uh, the behaviours of the senior team uh, and their ability to cope with the type of stress and detail involved is really important. And I think the, the second key one is making sure you have a very good cadre of partners and an ecosystem uh, that allows you to bring the best capabilities from the whole industry to bear to these types of programs. These programs are large, they're complex, and they require the best minds and the best execution capabilities uh, of both the, the organization itself, but also its partners in the industry. And I think um, I would urge you all to make sure you get the best people from the partners on these types of programs to ensure their success.